It's been on my wrist for a couple weeks now, so let's chat. Behold the Tick Watch Pro 5 with Wear OS by Google! Mob Voice sent this watch my way for me to share some thoughts, take it on a test drive, and I have a lot of thoughts. I have a lot of very complicated thoughts, and we're gonna get into that in this video here. First, the hardware. Mob Voy makes my favorite line of smartwatches specifically for this really fancy dual display technology. See, it kind of just lit up there, but it wasn't the full OLED screen that turned on. The design of the Pro 5 looks similar to previous Mobvoi tick watches. Uh, we've got an aluminum case going around the sides of the watch. We've got Gorilla Glass on that front screen, but the bezel running around the screen, that's now steel. Overall, the watch is rated for a pretty decent durability. The hardware updates for this generation, we've got a new two button control as compared to the older two button control. It should look really familiar if you've been keeping up with Pixel and Galaxy watches. We've got a top mounted side button. This is our main power button. That's where we power cycle the watch, get it booted up. Single press is gonna take us into our recent apps. And then if I swipe out of this, a double is gonna open up Google Wallet, which I don't have set up currently on this watch, just so that you can't see all of my credit card information. The life of a gadget reviewer is tricky as we keep trying to hide all that personal data. Then there's the rotating crown that turns to scroll through lists and notifications. A single press gets you into all of your little apps. And a double press takes you to a recent app. I just launched the Google Wallet, so it's gonna take me back here. But this is a handy shortcut. Say you were going back and forth between messaging and Google Maps. A double tap there is very much like the gestures for multitasking on a phone. And other than that, the UI is very similar in flow and organization to what we saw on the Pixel Watch. We can customize our watch faces just like any other previous Wear OS device. And we have these little side panels, these little toggles kind of get us through quick glances of what's going on in our day. For this new design, the center mounted button is a little awkward for how I wear my watch as compared to the sort of offset, the, the sort of more diagonally mounted buttons on the older generation of Tick Watch. Um, you can kind of see from my tan lines where I wear the watch probably too high up off my wrist bone, but especially for where I wear it, just raising my wrist is enough to interact with that, uh, that new center mounted crown. Like especially in a position where I'm doing some push-ups, it's not too difficult to get this button clicked and then start interacting with things like workouts or other little applets that are running. Super minor gripe, but I probably should start wearing my watch a little bit lower on my arm. The tech inside gets a little bit of a nudge too. We're using Qualcomm's new W5 Plus Gen 1 wearable SoC. This has two gigabytes of RAM, 32 gigs of storage. These are all upticks over the previous generation of uh, 4100 series Wear watch. Watches. This chip is more powerful than the last and has better low power management for audio, Wi-Fi, and GPS. These are all moved over to sort of co-processors so the main performance of the watch isn't having to manage that kind of hardware. So we get higher performance parts and that's balanced out by smarter component management. So we get a little bit more room in the casing. This watch has a larger battery than the previous generation Tick watch without any significant changes to how it wears or how it fits or how it feels on your wrist. And this battery boasts faster charging on this little pin adapter. It's still the same magnetic pin adapter that we've been using on previous Tick watches. If the watch is drained down to zero, about 30 minutes on the charger should get you about 60 5% battery capacity, which again, if you know a tick watch, that should be good for about two days of runtime, depending on your workouts and your sleep tracking. Mobvoi estimates about 80 hours of use for this generation of tick watch compared to 72 hours of use for their previous generation of watch. In my more anecdotal use, just kind of wearing it around and tracking some simple workouts, doing a little bit of GPS, but I don't really do a lot of sleep tracking, I'm just constantly managing notifications from my watch. I'd say both of these are still roughly in that two and a half to three days between charges, battery life, runtime. Of course, depending on your use, your apps, your notifications, and your fitness needs, your mileage will vary. And if you ever need more runtime, of course, you can kick on essential mode, drop it into an even lower power state. You can customize that essential mode depending on the battery life of the watch. And I mean, it's still refreshing. I've been using my older Tick Watch as my main daily driver. You pick it up and you see there's like 30% left on the battery and you don't even shrug that. That's still going to get you late into the evening, even with moderate use. The haptics are nicely improved. Much clearer pulses on alerts and notifications. There's a nice click effect as you use the crown. It's a really nice lifestyle upgrade as the haptics have always been some of the weakest parts of Mobvoi hardware. And the screen. One of my favorite features of this watch. This is a massive upgrade. There's more information available 
And now with data specific tiles, you can scroll through. The general readout is fantastic, but if you want something more specific like heart rate up as a larger data point up on the screen, you can scroll through the crown to get that. I mean, even something fun. Let's see if I can get this back to, this is a, a compass. You know, your compass can kind of track what direction you're facing and you can leave this up as a data point up on your screen. Like my history of being a Boy Scout, I was an Eagle Scout. This is just kind of nerdy fun, but I love that this is now a part of the simple display and you can get to that. This all changes up when you're tracking a workout and you get more options for more granular health tracking in your workout without having to turn on the OLED. And we keep all of the same backlight colors. I like purple, but you have 17 other options that you can choose from. New for this generation is also a dynamic heart rate backlight. So you set these limits and then the backlight will change going from a lighter, cooler color to a redder, warmer color. And it's a very quick visual identification that you're in the right target zone for your workout. Just a really cool consideration for a quick at a glance. This is the thing I like about good smartwatch apps. You shouldn't be sitting here and fiddling with a whole bunch of little tiny uh, complications to see what's going on. You can prime this for a very fast at a glance interaction. All of this hardware is on point. It's the hardware that kind of makes the tick watch conversation for me. It's why these are some of my favorite watches. But now we have to kind of chat software and that's where things get a little more complicated. We're finally getting Wear OS 3.5 after Google has announced uh, Wear OS 4, and we should expect Wear OS 4 updates to land on Galaxy watches and Pixel watches. I think we could easily predict that Galaxy and Pixel will get Wear OS 4 long before Mobvoi and Fossil, but we'll, we'll cover my frustration there more in just a sec. So here's one of the bummers for me. There is no unified Wear OS anymore. The Wear OS app is gonna be deprecated on Android phones and every manufacturer will have to field the costs to make their own setup and companion apps. The old Mobvoi app no longer supports the new watches and there's a new Mobvoi Health app you have to use instead. It's similar to how Samsung uses their own standalone Galaxy Watch app or how Pixel Watches are using the Fitbit app. This should look really familiar. It's very similar in terms of control, but you don't pair your Wear OS 3 watch through the Wear OS Google app. I think this makes Wear OS as a platform more confusing for consumers. If someone was familiar with the old app, it's gonna be frustrating having to use and install and sign into a new account. You've gotta use something different. Now, you, the person watching this video, you might be able to quickly acclimate. I, I think you're very clever if you watch my videos. I think you have excellent taste. But if you need proof that this is a massive pain point for other consumers, just look at all the teething pains Fossil has had moving to Wear OS 3. Immediately on the product page of a Series 6 watch, you're getting comments like these. Google seems to be giving Samsung preferential treatment for updates and using Samsung components in their own watch. And this is creating a two-tier system in Wear OS. Fossil and Mobvoi are the two companies most responsible for keeping Wear OS alive for years, but I feel like they're getting shuffled to the side. Back to the Tick Watch, the Tick apps are included with some solid heart and health tracking options. And we still run into the situation where the Mobvoi and the Google Fit apps kind of replicate functionality, but I'm honestly not sure how long Google Fit will stay the main option for Wear OS. As it seems, you know, like with Wear OS 4, they're gonna start migrating features and tracking to Health Connect in Android 14. So in a weird way, it kind of makes sense to lean more on the Mobvoi apps, and then we can hope that Google will bless us and Mobvoi with Health Connect interoperability. Now I use Fit on my phone as the main catch-all, so I can use any app and then sort of sync that over to my Google account. I'm gonna be really upset if my AmazeFit and my Mobvoi watches can't sync data easily with Health Connect. Now we've got all the core health metrics we should expect and Mobvoi has been stepping up their game. I wanna get to tick pulse here. I've been stepping up their game for more detailed information. All day heart rate and blood oxygen can be toggled in apps with options for true real time heart monitoring. And there's a new one button scan after about 90 seconds of measuring all of your different stats and it takes a more comprehensive snapshot of your cardio health and also tries to estimate your stress levels. The watch doesn't have a proper EKG, but Mavoy has been tracking cardiac events with other optical sensors. It's not gonna be as accurate, but you can get alerts for AFib and this works with 
any other phone. It's not like a Galaxy Watch, which blocks some features if you use a non-Galaxy phone. This is a strategy they've been using since the GTH Pro with their Arty heart health management software. Oh good, everything is normal. And then we can kind of go back in and see some of the more detailed stats um, from my heart tests and my heart checks. Nothing abnormal today. Congratulations, no abnormal heart record for the last 30 days. It is one of the fiddly things about a tick watch, but once you go a menu layer deep, there are some fantastic options to really customize the tracking that you can get from this watch. Even though it, it takes a battery hit, you can go to real time heart rate monitoring. It's gonna catch your pulse per second instead of going through sort of 10 minute snapshots during your day. If you're really trying to track some of that data, or if you have some, some issues with heart health, this is a setting you should absolutely be checking out. There are some fun new Mobvoi applets, like if you have a Mobvoi treadmill, you can kind of pair up your workout data there. There's a shortcut directly to that one tap measurement so you can get that 90 second scan. All the little things like stopwatches and calculators. We've got the tick barometer, that one's new. There's also a tick altimeter which can kind of help you uh, for some of your work, like especially we've been doing a lot of hikes up in the hills. The one that I'm kind of sad to see though that didn't get ported over was Tick Hearing. This is my Tick Watch Pro 3, and I liked having this little ambient noise gauge. You can get a sense of your environmental noise. I used to, I pulled this out, we did a concert in the park and it was shocking how loud that concert was, even pretty far away from the stage. I'm hoping that Mobvoi can port this over to the new watch in a future update. And the rest of the watch is Wear OS 3.5, for better or for worse. Uh, Google seems to be on a mission to separate features like Google Assistant away from the Qualcomm powered watches from Fossil and Mobvoi. We don't have any voice assistant controls, but we do have some prettier interactions when we're looking at things like Google Maps. It is really handy scrolling in on the crown and getting some granular map data. We're getting a few more novelty and fun apps in Wear OS 3.5. There are more music players and better support for media and podcasts. But on the whole, it's not that much different than Wear OS 2. I mean, at least on my older Wear OS 2 watches, I had a somewhat functional Google Assistant. Fossil is attempting to solve this with Amazon Alexa. Mobvoi just isn't using any voice assistant on their watch at present. My main use for a smartwatch isn't all of the little applets and controls, though I do wish we had some more shortcuts for specific apps. Like I'd love to have a shortcut for my home security system. It's something that I have on the Apple Watch that I think is really handy and it's faster than using uh, my phone to activate our alarm. But I mainly choose a smartwatch over a simpler fitness tracker for things like rich notification support and speech to text replies. Being able to open up an email, kind of scroll through it, and then tap this little microphone, it's gonna initialize, and now it's gonna listen for what I'm saying and it's gonna type out all of this. This is a really handy interaction and can save you know, that interaction as opposed to always having to pull my phone out of my pocket. This is one of my main use cases for a Wear OS watch. I really like the speed of this interaction and it makes a watch an even better gatekeeper for notifications than just always turning to my phone. If I could get speech to text notification replies on a simpler fitness tracker running some kind of RTOS, I don't know that I'd have as much fondness for Wear OS. I think I could easily make the jump. This is my Amazfit T-Rex. I don't wanna to sound too doom and gloom because this is cool. I mean, like from using the Pixel Watch, it's nice having this kind of fluidity, all of the prettier animations and transitions. But like using the Pixel Watch, while the animations are prettier, I don't know that interactions are really faster in operation. The act of getting an alert, reading it, and replying to it is actually a little slower than previous generations of Wear OS because we have this system of, a pop-up and then an animation and then it opens the card for you when you get that notification. It's another one of my complaints from the earliest days of Android Wear, a watch should be built for the fastest interactions, that at a glance quick bit of information and nothing has really been faster than the original Wear OS card UI. Getting down to the basics, even something like our lock screen, there's just enough of a lag before it pops up that you might tap again and which then selects one of the numbers before you can put in your pin. I don't take my watch off a lot during the day, but this one has tripped me up every time I put it on in the morning, and then I go through that process of putting in my pin to unlock the watch. It's up, oh, oh, but wait, okay, now I can put in my pin. So if anyone from Google might be catching this video, I'd like to say, I'd like to be on record, 
I don't like this software strategy. I want this hardware on my wrist. This dual display, this is a fantastic feature. The design is more rugged than a Pixel Watch. It gets roughly three times more battery life out in the field, and it's more powerful than a Pixel Watch. And currently with more robust health tracking without having to pay for an additional Fitbit subscription service. And the other idea is going with a Galaxy Watch, but slowing down the software on a competitor like a Fossil or a Mobvoi doesn't really make me want to own a Galaxy Watch, especially when I have to own a Galaxy phone to get all the features of the Galaxy Watch. And I think it's irresponsible of techies to act like sideloading a cracked Galaxy Watch app on another phone is a reasonable solution. I really wish the Mobvoi had a true EKG, but it's pretty close with some of their standard optical sensor heart rate tracking. And if I want to use all of the features of this watch with a Sony phone, or a OnePlus, I have no restrictions on my Mobvoi using my Moto phone. It really makes me miss those Google days where they were celebrating the diversity of their ecosystem, not trying to lock it down to specific winners and losers. Because above all, I just want more watch variety for consumers to play with. A watch is a super personal piece of wearable technology, and not just the hardware and the technology features, it should also suit your style. I don't know, right now I'm, I'm really concerned by Google strategy. To me, it feels a lot like an Apple style misdirect. Google is letting their other partners take the blame. So if something looks broken, consumers are blaming Mobvoi and Fossil. Mobvoi is breaking their promises of support and Fossil is forcing you to use a different app. Well, those really aren't problems with Mobvoi and Fossil. Google is kind of sitting back and quietly giving Samsung early access. Beyond Pixel and Samsung, we've now seen two launch strategies for Wear OS 3. You know, the Fossil watch was plagued with early support issues and it took a lot of patching to clean up the performance on their watch. Mobvoi did something different. They sat out those kinds of teething pains, they waited for Qualcomm's new chip, and I think they're just trying to start fresh with Wear OS 3. If we're being kind of brutally honest here, both of those strategies suck. But I don't know that one is really better than the other. Both seem to be pissing people off. Now we're going to see all the folks complaining about getting Wear OS 3 when Pixel and Galaxy watches will start getting updated to Wear OS 4. <laughs> Just as a general shout out to, to the companies making some solid fitness focused watches, and especially if, if those companies already make their own companion app, it might be interesting to focus on developing solutions that make a fitness tracker smarter than to depend on Google for keeping your software up to date. As I've been mentioning, I, I really liked the Mobvoi GTH Pro, and it runs a simple RTOS, and it's similar in many ways to watches like my AmazeFit. Sure, the watch operation is a little less complex, there's a little less fun stuff that you can do with it, but on the streamlined focus of what we want on a wrist-worn wearable, it's covering the core functionality really well, and it's using less power to do it. So a watch like this can run for days easily, out in the field. I'd kind of like to see what this hardware could do if it wasn't burdened by a more complex smartphone operating system. I mean, it's just kind of silly how we're still looking at really expensive smartwatches that only last a day out in the field away from a charger. And I don't think it would take a lot, just a couple feature add-ons, maybe something like speech to text for notifications and replies. Or, or, or we could partner with Microsoft to add a voice assistant, do Bing search on a low power watch that's still connected to your phone. Get a little of that chat GPT action going directly to your wrist. We could get a couple things like that. I don't know many folks would really miss Wear OS and we would get the hardware from Mobvoi and especially the variety of hardware from the Fossil Group that people like to wear as a watch, as a timepiece that complements their style. We would definitely miss some of those little applets. Some of those apps are fun, but a lot of these controls and settings can be replaced with just the basic media player options. I use Kobuz as my music streaming service. It doesn't have a Wear OS app. I can still control playback from my watch just using the generic tools built into Android and Wear OS. I get similar media player controls on almost every single fitness tracker that I own now. We would definitely run into some issues with things like payment services or wallet kinds of apps, but the divide between support is likely to continue souring the consumer experience. And of course, we have all of those techies that will shallowly complain about 
Colossal and Mobvoi without looking at the larger picture of software and support. Samsung is now responsible for the majority of Wear OS sales. And while Google is now a top seller of watches in North America, Wear OS makes up a much smaller percentage of their sales. They bought Fitbit, and Fitbit sells a lot more watches than Google sells Pixel watches. But above all of those software shenanigans, I, I do sort of consider myself a hardware guy first. And this is the hardware I want on my wrist. I continued using a TicWatch Pro 3 Ultra, and I never ran into that moment where I felt like the experience was compromised. Even after sporting a Pixel watch, I went back to my Tick Watch. My wife is using the Pixel Watch now, and she really likes a lot of the features in the Fitbit app integration. She really does not like the battery life. I totally understand people who want to belong, be a part of an ecosystem, you know, the it just works kind of consumer lock-in, but that's not for me. I like specific features, and I like a broad ecosystem of products, because with fair competition, that's where we get better hardware. Companies actually have an incentive to compete. I really like this hardware, and I am definitely a little frustrated by the software and support situation, but I don't think Mobvoi deserves all the blame for that. I'm gonna be supporting this watch for the immediate future. Don't consider this video the end-all be-all conclusive conversation on a review. If you've got questions, don't be shy. Drop me some of those tasty hot takes down in the comments below. How do you feel about accessory competition? Should we just now expect that a watch or a set of earbuds can only function with that manufacturer's phone? I think that's a pretty bad outlook for the future of consumer electronics. But what say you? As always, as always folks, thanks so much for watching, for sharing these videos, subscribing to the channel. All of the support lately has been absolutely fantastic. Those of you who are sharing and uh, clicking on links in my video description, if you're hitting my home site, somegadgetguy.com, or if you're uh, joining the list of names scrolling by on your screen from my Patreon. That's patreon.com slash somegadgetguy. Don't look at my pin. This list is basically the coolest collection of tech pals in the universe, so I hope you'll check them out. Now, you know where you can find me around the rest of the internet, at somegadgetguy on the Mastodons. I'm streaming my podcast on the Twitch, and I'm sharing my photos on the Flickr, but a little less so these days on the Twitters and the Facebooks and the Instagrams, and I will catch you all on the next review.